Hey guys, welcome to Layla Teachers. Today we'll speak about the fate of amino acids and also about transamination and deamination. Now, nitrogen, it enters the body in a variety of compounds present in food, the most important being amino acids contained in dietary protein. Nitrogen leaves the body as urea, ammonia and other products derived from amino acid metabolism. Amino acid pool is a pool supplied by three sources, by amino acids provided by the degradation of body proteins, amino acids derived from dietary protein and synthesis of non-essential amino acids from simple intermediates of metabolism. Conversely, the amino pool is depleted by three routes. Synthesis of body protein, amino acids consumed as precursors of essential nitrogen containing small molecules and conversion of amino acids to glucose, glycogen, fatty acids, ketone bodies or carbon dioxide and water. In healthy, well-fed individuals, the input to the amino acid pool is balanced by the output. The amino acid pool is set to be in a steady state and the individual is set to be in nitrogen balance. There are two major enzyme systems responsible for degrading damaged or unneeded proteins. The ATP-dependent ubiquitin proteasome system of the cytosol, which degrades endogenous proteins, and the atp independent degradative enzyme system of the lysosomes which degrades extracellular proteins and it contains acid hydrolases. Disposal of amino acids, degradation, they can undergo transamination or oxidative deamination where ammonia is removed. And if you have to synthesize amino acids, it will be reductive amination and transamination. Starting with transamination, the first step in the catabolism of most amino acids is the transfer of their alpha amino group to alpha ketoglutarate. The products are an alpha keto acid and glutamate. Alpha ketoglutarate plays a pivotal role in amino acid metabolism by accepting the amino groups from most amino acids, thus becoming glutamate. Glutamate produced can be oxidatively deaminated or used as an amino group donor in the synthesis of non-essential amino acids. The enzymes are found in the cytosol and the mitochondria of the cells throughout the body, especially those of the liver, kidney, intestine and muscle. All amino acids, with the exception of lysine and threonine, participate in transamination at some point in their catabolism. The two main amino transferases are known as alanine amino transferase and aspartate amino transferase. Alanine uses the amino acid alanine to it converts into pyruvate, meanwhile converting alpha ketoglutarate into glutamate. And aspartate amino transferase uses um, aspartate to convert into oxaloacetate, meanwhile converting alpha ketoglutarate into glutamate. All amino transferases require the coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate, which is a derivative of vitamin B6. Amino transferases act by transferring the amino group of an amino acid to the pyridoxal part of the coenzyme to generate pyridoxamine phosphate. The pyridoxamine form of the coenzyme then reacts with an alpha keto acid to form an amino acid, at the same time regenerating the original aldehyde form of the coenzyme, which was pyridoxal phosphate. Moving on to deamination, in contrast to transamination reactions that transfer amino groups, oxidative deamination by glutamate dehydrogenase results in the liberation of the amino group as free ammonia. These reactions occur primarily in the liver and kidney. They provide alpha keto acids that can enter the central pathway of energy metabolism and ammonia, which is a source of nitrogen in urea synthesis. 
The coenzyme for glutaminase dehydrogenase is NAD plus or NADP. After ingestion of a meal containing protein, glutamate levels in the liver are elevated and the reaction proceeds in the direction of amino acid degradation and the formation of ammonia. It is inhibited by GTP and activated by ADP. Thus, when energy levels are low in the cell, amino acid degradation by glutamate dehydrogenase is high, facilitating the energy production from the carbon skeletons derived from amino acids. Two mechanisms are available in humans for the transport of ammonia from the peripheral tissues to the liver for its ultimate conversion to urea. The first, found in most tissues, uses glutamine synthetase to combine ammonia with glutamate to form glutamine. Glutamine is a non-toxic transport form of ammonia. The glutamine is transported in the blood to the liver, where it is cleaved by glutaminase to produce glutamate and free ammonia. The second transport mechanism used primarily by muscle involves transamination of pyruvate to form alanine. Alanine is transported by the blood to the liver where it is converted to pyruvate again by transamination. In the liver, the pathway of gluconeogenesis can use the pyruvate to synthesize glucose which can enter the blood and be used by muscle, a pathway called the glucose alanine cycle. That is it for this video guys. See you later. Bye.